Thank you, Lord. Trust him. Do you trust him today? Do you trust God today? Does he answer prayer today? Is he your God today? Oh, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can go ahead and put that PowerPoint, please. You can have a seat. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God is all but able. They call us Bishop Willie and Mary. We are known as Little Bishop and Big Bishop. Amen. I guess you know why. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to the next one. What I've done for you is I'm putting the scriptures up that we're going to be going over. Amen. You may want to write them down because we're not going to put all the scriptures on the board. We have Hebrews, the third chapter, the first to the eighth verse. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, four through 18. Mark 5, 24 and 34. Don't get afraid. A lot of times, God don't let me go over everything I do. Amen. You got a tag team today. We going to tag out today. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, sir. Give me a smile so I know you're up in here today. I love the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the next one, please. This is Bishop Willie. He's starting with Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first to the third. Then we have Matthew 22, 37, 38. Matthew 10, 37. Amen. Praise God. You can take it down. I just want to greet Dr. Amar, Pastor Utris, amen, and all the people of this leadership team here at this beautiful church, Deep, Deeper Life Fellowship. I want to greet all of you friends. I didn't come to be a show off. I came to be a blessing. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That God is so good. I want to thank the Lord for my husband, Willie, Bishop Willie. Can you raise your hand? Amen. 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 We've had 33 years of marriage. We celebrated an anniversary yesterday. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Glory to God. Just thank the Lord for that. Amen. Glory to God. Today I'm going to talk to you about deliverance is all about God. Amen. Can somebody say that with me? Deliverance is all about God. Amen. God, as we know, is the beginning of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and in earth. And on earth, visible and invisible. God wants us to live free from sins that, no easy, that don't easily entangle us. We're talking today about deliverance is about God. Deliverance is not about the pastor. Deliverance is about God. Deliverance is about you getting your heart in the right place. God can't deliver you if you are not in the right place. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? Because God is holy. God is righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go to Hebrews, the third chapter, the first to the eighth verse. I'm going to be doing mine from the New Living Translation. Amen. That's Hebrews, the third chapter, the first to the eighth verse. Glory to God. Deliverance is about God. We got to get ourselves out of this equation. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. It's about God. And you getting yourself in the right place. It reads, and so dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. Second verse, for he was faithful to God who appointed him just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house. Does that make sense to you today? For every house has a builder, 
but the one who built everything is God. Amen. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truth God would reveal later. Verse 6, but Christ as the son oversees God's entire house, and we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. Verse 7, this is why the Holy Spirit says today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. God has promised us as children that he will deliver us. Sometimes we cry and we go through a lot of changes, but if you stick with God, he will what? Deliver you. God knows everything you have need of. Amen. Every hour of the day, God is with you. Do you believe that today? God is holy. God is righteous. And he what? He never what? Fails. Can you say that with me? God does not fail. Glory to God. God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. Hallelujah. When you call his name, God will answer. Amen. Come on. Some of you want too much sometimes. Some of you don't want what God wants for you. You say, God, I want your will to be done. But no, you want your will to be done. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? God is holy. I tell you, God is righteous. God is a God. Hey, Lord. Believe the Lord is real today. How many of you sought the Lord and he heard you and he answered you? Come on, I need you to say amen to Jesus. This is about God. This ain't got nothing to do with me. Glory to God. No, no, don't let, let the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. I'm talking to you today. Jesus. Glory to God. Psalm said, I sought the Lord. I remember. I remember when I first got saved. That's all I wanted, brother, salvation. I didn't want no pastorship. You know why? I wanted to do what I wanted to do. If I wanted to sneak and peek, I wanted to do it. See, when you get into the office of a pastor or something, everybody looking at you. They want you to be the right person. But I was born just like you, by a mother and father. I came in this world with sin. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. I didn't call Mary. God called me. I ran away from the calling because I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I wanted to go to the thrift shop. I wanted to go to the ship thrift shop. Y'all think pastors are rich. I like the thrift shop. I'm telling you, I like the thrift shop. And so God is holy. God called me. I wasn't trying to do it. God called me. He will call you if you just listen to him. I wasn't listening to him. I didn't care what he said. I didn't want to be saved. Not, not a holy rolling Christian. Mm-mm. God saved me. I rolled on that floor so much I couldn't roll no more. I rolled and I rolled. And I couldn't believe it. I didn't cause me to talk in tongues. I thought it was crazy. What are they doing? God put me down on the floor. Some of y'all know what it means to be slayed in the spirit. I was knocked out, rolling all over the floor with my beautiful hair, my beautiful clothes. You know, enemy talks to you. But see, I'm talking about deliverance. If you want something from God, See, God will sneak in on you sometime. And he did that for me. I had just gone to the nightclub. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't. I was partying. I was having a good time. I didn't see you that day. Okay. I was having a good time. But God called me. Like he's calling some of you today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Deliverance is about God. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse reads, 2 Timothy 4, 18, from the King James Version. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To, be, to him be glory forever and ever. I went to the club that Saturday. I heard the voice of God with my heathen self. God spoke to me. Get on out of that bed. Go to church. I was going to go across the street. It was a church across the street. Uh-uh. Get in your car. God will take you. See, people get me when they say, I've been seeking God. I've been seeking. You ain't got to do all that seeking. God going to find you if you want him. Do I have a witness today? If you know what I'm talking about, say amen. amen. You ain't got to go a whole long places. God will find you where you are. He found me in that bed sleeping. Glory to God. I heard his voice. Deliverance in the Bible signifies God's divine intervention to rescue his people from danger and oppression, our spiritual bondage. He, he provides for us divine protection and spiritual deliverance. God will deliver you. Say that with me today. God will deliver you. Say it again until you believe it. God will deliver you. Yes, you're going through some stuff. Yes, you want a husband, you want a wife, but God will deliver you if you put your heart and your mind and your soul on him. Amen. Do I have a witness today? Amen. I met my husband at a stop sign. Come on, a stop sign. My sister and brother pastors are pastors in Sanford. They tried to tell me to talk to Brother Willie. But I didn't want Brother Willie. I got a house. I got a car. Brother Willie ain't had nothing. Okay? <laughs> Am I right, Brother Willie? <laughs> Tell the truth. Ain't had a thing. And my sister kept saying, he's a good man. He's a nice man. I don't care what kind of man he is. He ain't got no money. <laughs> and I need somebody to help me pay my mortgage. Not knowing one day, my sister got in the car and they, we were going to her church. Brother Willie met my sister on the corner at the stop sign, four-way stop. They got to talking, everything. I didn't know this was a man she had been trying to get me to meet. He going to his church. We going to her church. Next thing she did, she popped that, that button on the back. He got in the car. That's how. I, see, you ain't got to run no man down. You ain't got to run no woman down. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. If you wait on the Lord and be a what? Good cheer. We later found out that that was a divine appointment. About a year, we talked to each other. Then I say, brother, we need to go ahead and get married because it's hot. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. The Bible says it's better to marry than to what? Burn. Glory to God. That's all it took was a year. Brother Willie came in my house. My house. But before, I'm talking to some people. Some of you ladies and men want people in your life. You know, he didn't say you had to be barren and not have anyone. I'm talking deliverance. Then you offer them dating chats and all that kind of stuff, trying to pick up somebody on Facebook. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You're picking up wherever you can pick them up, but you better wait on God. If I can get one at a stop sign, come on. Jesus, I'm talking about deliverance. I'm trying to help you out. You don't need to be running around here Going on the dating sites trying to find somebody. The Bible says if you seek the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. seek the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need to do is seek him with all your heart, all your spirit. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Somebody know that. Give God a go. Oh, 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 God, thank you. Oh, Jesus. 
Woo, God, thank you. Woo. Give him a hand of praise. Jesus. Glory to God. I want to tell you one last story about deliverance. I was in the Army Reserve. I was in what they call those weekend warriors. We, we did two weeks a year, and we were military folks and everything. So I did that. So my first sergeant, the drill sergeant, told us, well, we're going to be on a night march. We're going to be marching, and you need to put your gas mask on. And so say, be prepared. So here we are marching. I'm marching, not thinking about nothing. Forgot what the man told me. All of a sudden, they start booming, boom, 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 noise. Oh, I said, my God, what is going on? The troop went that way. I went this way. I deserted the troop. I got up a tree. My drill came to me. He said to me, he said, look. He said, uh, come on out that tree, Mary. Come on out. Private, get out that tree. I ain't getting out of nothing. I'm going home to my mama. Glory to God. So anyway, divine intervention. Talking about deliverance. God began to let me know, you never quit nothing in your life, and you ain't going to quit this either. And I found myself in the military 14 more years. I was E7 when I got out. Amen. I'm talking about deliverance. See, God can come in any area of your life. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You think I'm crazy, but I love the Lord. Amen. If I could party for... The devil, and I had a good time when I was out there. I ain't going to tell you no lie. Some folks get up here and lie to you. I had a good time. I did everything I could do. I ain't going to tell you that my, honey, my Yankee Panky, what do you call that thing? I had on Daisy Dukes. And they was as high as they could possibly go. See, I'm talking about deliverance. Glory to God. God deliver me from them high shorts, amen. Almost up my Yankee, amen. God delivered me. I'm talking about Jesus today. Holy God, God is good. I'm going to do one more story, then I'm going to do a little quick skit for you, amen. See, my husband gets scared when I get on the, the computer, and I do my messages. I, I'm hiding my stuff from you guys because y'all might get scared too. I use that big font. I can't see that good. I use that 20 font so I can not miss anything. What did he say? You got all, he always said, you always got all that stuff. Yeah, I have all that stuff, but I know what God tells me to say. And once he puts it in my spirit, I don't need that. But to help you out today, I got this. <laughs> Let us go to praise God. I want to read. This is the easy read. Read version. I like different versions of the Bible. And I know, I know we have to be careful with that. Amen. 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 I want to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. Tell you a little bit about her. Glory to God. You can go with me to Mark, the fifth chapter, the 25th to 30, 34 verse. My volunteers, get ready. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says, I just want to tell you a little bit about this woman. It says, the Bible talks about the power of God, deliverance. I wanted to bring it closer to you. There was a, there was a sick woman with a blood problem. And we don't know what it was except for the fact that she was bleeding a lot. Her human and physical strength was failing her. Scriptures. Mark the fifth chapter the 25th verse, there among the people was a woman who had been bleeding for the past 12 years. She had suffered very much. Many doctors had tried to help her, and all the money she had was spent. But she was not improving. In fact, her sickness was getting worse. Verse 27, the woman heard about Jesus, so she followed him with the other people and touched his coat. She thought, if I can just touch his coat, 
that would be enough to heal me. As soon as she touched his coat, her bleeding stopped. She felt that her body was healed from all of the suffering. Jesus immediately felt power go out of him. So he stopped and he turned around. He said, who touched my clothes? Verse 31, the followers say to Jesus, there are so many people pushing against you, but you ask who touched me? But Jesus continued looking for the one who touched him. The woman knew that she, she was healed. So she came and she bowed at Jesus' feet. She was shaken with fear. She told Jesus the whole story. He said to her, dear woman, you are made well because you believe. Go in peace. Just a little bit about this woman. The Bible told, her, uh, told, her, told us that, that 12 long years, I'm talking to women that understand what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Imagine all that bleeding. And to have to have it for 12 years, continually bleeding and so forth. And she was in a situation, I guess, today, if we look at it, and the Bible didn't say this is me imposing this. She was bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And she probably, she could have had hemorrhoids. That's just a thought. But if she continued to bleed, and I'm thinking in my mind, if she continued to bleed the way that she was bleeding, that could give her a fatal problem. She could have organ damage because she's bleeding so much. But she saved within herself. Come on up here, group. Amen. Come on up here. You, you my folks, y'all going to try to keep me from doing something. Amen. Praise God. Come on, come on. I, I want to. Wait, 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 my man, folk. Come on, men, men. Come on, men. Come on. Y'all supposed to stop me from coming through this thing. I don't know what you want to do. I'm trying to go through the crowd. Where y'all going? How y'all going to block me? That's the opening. Yes, y'all yeah, going to let me go through here because, see, if I could just what? T I'm going to go. Lord, I'm going to y'all, y'all, uh-uh. This little woman, I, look. I got through. Where my Jesus? Jesus. Oh, God, Jesus. Jesus. Who touched me? I touched you, Lord. I just, I'm so tired of being sick that I'm sick and tired of being sick. And I want to be healed right now. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the healing. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. Hallelujah. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be healed of your plague. Thank you, hallelujah. Jesus, praise God. I just tagged out with my partner. You got Bishop Wheelie now. Praise God. Glory to God. Y'all know that God is a delivering God. He wants to tell you, he's gonna talk about one of the ways you can get delivered is that you have to be separated from the world. The Bible tells you that. Separation. That even though we are in this world, but yet we are not of this world. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's going, that's one of the ways you're going to be separated. You can't walk with these people. Amen. I love my family. But if my family ain't saved and yes, they talking yes, yes, foolishness, yes, yes. I got to cut loose. But yeah, I'm still a witness. Amen. Bishop Glory Willie. be to God. Come on, give her a hand, clap of praise. Give her a hand, clap, amen. Ain't God good? Ain't he good? Hallelujah. Is God good to you today? You ought to just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for being so good to you, amen. Glory to God, amen. I'm so grateful to God, amen. I thank Dr. Marla, amen, and the pastoral staff and you. Who are here today, I just thank God for you all, amen, and we just give God praise. Come on, give God one more hand, clap of praise, amen. <laughs> Glory be to God, hallelujah. Now, I'm going to be talking about separation, separating yourself, amen, and a lot of things that we have to do, amen, we have to separate ourselves from the things of the world, and that's what we don't want to do because we get so enticed with what we are doing, enticed about things that are going on, we don't want to 
be part of that separation. But, amen, if you look at Genesis 12, 1 and 2, it says, <coughs> and God said to Abraham, amen, he said, separate yourself, amen, from your relatives, amen, your parents, your grandparents, your brother, your sister, your uncles, amen, your aunts, amen, your cousin, and all the people that is in your family, amen, who are related by blood. And most persons, amen, have a close bond, amen, with family members, amen, and relatives. And they are always in pain and emptiness, amen, when the bond is broken, amen. And that's what we have to realize. You have to separate yourself. And i never forget, amen, when I had to separate myself. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. My mama had 16 kids, and I had a, a pretty decent life. I was a hairdresser for 25 years in Atlanta, had a, a pretty big bid, and I was doing real good, a lot of customers. And I mess around, glory to God, and I met this person, amen, um, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't me. no, it went on her. <laughs> <laughs> she was very attractive, amen, and came like a, 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 a sheep in wool clothing, amen. And I kind of, you know, got wet a little bit, and and that thing I know, I, I found myself, she said she wanted me to try this, this stuff here. And I, never, I didn't know what she was talking about. And um, she said, we're going to have a good time tonight. You try this. And so, you know, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> so I tried it. And that thing I know, it was crack cocaine. I did not know anything about crack cocaine. And I messed around and I got, I got hooked on crack cocaine. And I would, I would go in my job and I would make $1,000 in one day. That's how much business I had. And I would take that money, we would go back and we'd buy some more crack cocaine, amen, and then we were would, we would doing it and doing it and doing it. And then it got to a point, I was just, my, my life began to go down. My life went down to nothing, amen. I had a nice uh, apartment, amen, a beautiful home, and I was doing very well. And i never forget this. My mom told me one day, she said, Jane, you need to separate yourself. You need to get away from your family. You need to get away from us. You need to just leave and get yourself together. And I ended up leaving Atlanta. I took the advice of my mama, and I came to Florida, amen. Glory to God. And I tell, I tell you, I'm so grateful that I came to Florida because I met my beautiful wife, amen. Now we've been married 33 years. Give God a hand clap of praise, amen. But sometimes you've got to separate yourself. You've got to get away from your family, from your friends, from your loved ones. And, and that's the problem that we have, a problem that we have, we want to keep everybody intact. And we want to act like we so this and that. And we got it going on. And deep inside, you're hurting on the inside. You're in pain. You're in misery. And all that you're going through. And you're calling out to God, and God is not hearing you. The reason he's not hearing you is because you're not in the right place. Amen. And once I got in the right place, glory be to God, God began to change my life. Amen. He began to turn me around. and. Glory to God, and I met my wife, and she began to be the person that I needed. She had everything going for herself. She had a house. She had a car. Amen. And, and I tell you, one day, uh, I was one day I was, <laughs> I was sitting in the church before I met her. I was sitting in the church, and this guy looked at me and said, he said, I want you to come and go with me tonight, and I want me to go to his house. And I'm looking at him. I said, wait, 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 wait. There ain't nothing wrong with me now. <laughs> I know I'm in bad shape, but I, <laughs> I can't go to your house. He's not with me and my wife and my children. So I went to his house with him, and, and next thing I know, he served a, a dinner, gave me a nice dinner, but I was still transitioning, trying to get myself together before I met my wife. And he said, did you see that car in the driveway? After you? He pulled out the keys. He said, God told me to give you that car tonight. He said, I'm going to give you this car. He gave me the car, and I'm looking at him thinking, man, something wrong with this man right here. I'm not gay. I'm not, I'm not trying to be gay. Or I'm not into all this foolishness. So I, I'm, trying, I'm still trying to check him out, trying to see what's wrong with him. Amen. But God began to train me 
it began to put me on a different road, amen. But let me tell you something. If you let God be God in you, God will change everything about you. God will make everything right about you. I don't care what you're going through right now, but you got to believe God, that God is a giving God. God is a loving God. God is a caring God. I love him today because he heard my cry and he pitied every groan. I love him today because he's been good to me. That's how I met my brother right here because of God goodness. Amen. Won't you get somebody a high five and tell them you love them with the love of Jesus today. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and when I got here, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> my life began to turn around. My life turned around here. Back in 2019, I didn't know. I didn't understand what was happening. I found out I was getting ready to cut the grass, and I, like I was going to faint, I was going to fall out. And come to find out, I had a blood disorder. And he ended up, I had to go to, he ended up going to Tennessee. I had a blood, uh, uh, what you call it? Yeah. Uh, transplant. Transplant. I had a, a bone marrow stem cell transplant back in 2019. And the doctors told me at that time that if you don't get this done, you're going to be dead before the end of 2019. So we went ahead and we did, did the transplant. And... Um, and God changed my life, amen. Look at me now, amen. Wow. This is a product of what God has done. It's been five years now, amen. I'm still going through some things, but I'm okay. I'm all right. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good because God is good. Can you say amen? Has he been good to you? Can you tell him thank you, Jesus? Won't you stand on your feet and give him praise? Give him praise. Give him praise. If he's done anything for you, you ought to give him praise. You ought to give him glory. You ought to thank him for what he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit, 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 sit. In Matthew 22, 20, 37, 38, he said, And he that loved the father more than me, amen, is not worthy of me. And he that loved the daughter, amen, more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me to go bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Sometimes you got to let follow God and let God do what he wants to do, amen. He said, follow me and I, glory to God, and leave the past behind. How many of you are not left the past behind you? Amen. And that's the problem. We want to go back and we want to keep digging up the past. We're digging up the past, but you want to leave the past behind you. How are you going to go forward? How are you going to go the way God wants you if you keep digging up the past? Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to leave that favorite person behind, amen, that friend, that family member, that loved one, amen. Turn me down just a little bit, amen. <laughs> Follow me and turn your life over into a new life, amen, because the old life has gone and the new life is at hand, amen. How many of y'all believe that today? How many of you believe that once you follow Jesus, amen, and you turn that life around, amen, you got a brand new life, amen. Now listen at this. It said when you separate yourself, amen, Hey, glory to God, you have love for others. <laughs> when you separate yourself, <laughs> you have hope for the hopeless, amen. Yeah. For tomorrow, glory to God, <laughs> when you separate yourself, <laughs> you have peace like no other. <laughs> when you separate yourself, <laughs> you have joy and more and evermore. <laughs> glory to God, when you separate yourself, <laughs> you have no more pride, amen. <laughs> when you separate yourself, <laughs> you have no more stress, <laughs> When you separate yourself, you have no more pain. Can you believe with me today that you don't have that problem going on? I don't have pain in my body anymore, glory to God. I've been sick for a long time. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. My body, my body was so, my body had changed. Everything had changed in my body. I looked like I was raw. My whole body like it was totally raw. I like it like it was totally dead. That woman there, she rubbed me down for a whole year every night. 
Now, this skin, this skin is totally different. If you saw what a, what a, a, a dead skin looked like, that's what I had in my body. Totally, even my face was dead skin. It's like I, like I was dead. But I've been resurrected by Jesus, amen. Come on, you better give him a praise. You better give him a praise, amen. See, this is what you look like when you got resurrected, amen. Some of you need to be resurrected. Some of you need to be changed, amen. Some of you still are going through the same thing over and over and over and over. You're trying to figure how you're going to pay your bill because you're not trusting God. You won't pay your tithe. You'll put something in the offering. You'll put a little bit in the offering. But if you pay your tithe, you'll be obedient to God. God will make a way. You ain't got to worry about having problems, amen, in your home, having a problem with your children, amen, having a problem on your job. You just got to follow Jesus. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Do you love him today? Do you love Jesus? Amen. Glory to God, I love him. He's a good God. He's a wonderful God. And if you love him today, you ought to say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Glory to God. My, 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 my. Sin and lawlessness, amen, they, reduce, they produce separation. Sin builds barrier between us and God and other people, amen. And if you are on the Lord's side, you must separate yourself from sin, meaning you must be apart and sanctified and separated from that which is not of God. And that's the problem that we have today. We got to separate ourselves from the things that are not of God. Amen. Some of you still are doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Some of you still are living the way that you shouldn't be living. Some of you still, amen. My mom had 16 kids. My daddy died at an early age. And my mom raised up all these kids by herself. She didn't have another man coming in there. She didn't have nobody else trying to uh, take care of. She just relied on God. We was on welfare, amen, but she made it through, amen. If she can make it with 16, I know you can make it with one, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap. Do your love him today. Glory to God, hallelujah. Separate yourself. Our sin means that we are forfeiting eternity. Amen. Sin causes us to forfeit eternity and bid us to, uh, amen, to heaven, that we won't go to heaven. But we must stay connected to God. That's the problem. You got to stay connected to God. You got to come to church. Some of you don't want to go to church, amen. You got all kinds of excuses about going to church. Well, I ring out, go today. We may tell you something. You got to go every time you feel. I don't care how you feel. You got to go to church. You got to trust God. You got to believe God that he's going to make a way out of no way, no matter what it is. Don't tell me, well, my brother's sick, amen. I need to stay home today. Glory to God. I need to uh, try to uh, stay home because I got to pay these bills, amen. No, you got to trust God, amen. And that's the problem. Do we really trust God? Amen. If I didn't trust God, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I just came back from my doctors in Tennessee. I had to go down there. They was flying me down there every, at one time I was flying down once a month. Because of my body, the changes that my body was going through. But glory to God, I'm so happy today. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even lift up my legs. Glory to God. Y'all better, better give God some praise in this house. Amen. Acting like God ain't did nothing for you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. God has been good to you. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> praise him. Praise him. Glory to God. Something else we want to tell you about, Brother Willie. Amen. <clears throat> this is a blessing. We, we, we bragging about God today. We ain't bragging about ourselves. I thank the Lord. My husband had two years of the military. He got injured. He's been <laughs> sick for five years. Myofibrosis, amen. As he told you, it's a blood disorder. He also has something that's called host versus, graft versus host disease. What that is, he had a donor, which was his brother. And... Sometimes it doesn't happen to everybody when they have transplants because it's so much that his brother had, he got a disease that doesn't affect any of you. It only affects his body. Some of you have heard of scleroderma. If you touch his hand, with his hand, some parts of his hands feel like wood. It's just that hard. And it's difficult for him to get a shot 
uh, the nail. They have to find the soft part. Like we got soft tissue. He doesn't have that all over in different areas of his body. It went from that particular disease went from his back and his face to his mouth. Through this whole time, we took pictures because we wanted to show people that God is a miracle working God. Amen, 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 amen. My husband had a green tongue, amen. It was green, just different things that were going on. I'm talking about a God that is a delivering God, amen. Amen, 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 amen. But I'll tell you something. I want you to hear this, tell you something. He's a chaplain, been a chaplain with the uh, Orange County Sheriff's Department for over 25 years, yes. still is a chaplain. Amen. He, he, he also, uh, he's a chaplain. He also is over the Homeowners Association. Now, y'all folks in the homeowners, y'all didn't hear me say that, okay? Amen. He's over the Homeowners Association. We got 500 some, 500 some houses in our community. He did not stop doing anything. Amen. He continued to do our church continued to do everything through this sickness. He was down about oh, two weeks. The thing you really need to know about God, and you're going through some hard places in your life, five years. He only did two years in the military. Our, if we had to pay our bill, mother, $6 million. You know how, how much health care is. And they flew us back. Flew us back every month, back and forth. And they still fly us back. Amen. God is a good God. Go ahead, honey. I hear you breathing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. And it's not, she said, it's not about me. It's all about God. Amen. And y'all see me here today. And y'all see how I'm moving around. Most of the time, I can't even move. I can't even hardly walk. Amen. But y'all see me walking today? Amen. That's the anointing. Amen. That's the power of God. So most of the time I can't. I have to have a cane. I got a scooter in my car. I got crutches, amen. I got a walker. But do I look like I need that today, amen? That's the power of God. You ought to give God a hand clap of praise. You ought to just tell him thank you. Lift your hands and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for being so good to you. Glory, whatever you're going through today, whatever you're going through, amen, you can tell God thank you. I want to know, do you trust God today? Do you trust him? I a blessing I over you today that when they become up front, God bless you today. And if you're not saved, you're not born again. Say this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. All I've done, I've done against you. And Lord, I ask you today to come into my life, to set me free, to make me whole, that I may follow you the rest of my days. And if you say that and you believe in your heart, God has heard your cry. God has heard you. And all of you that was praying for the day, God heard you. Amen. He said, go and sin no more. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.